All right, this is gonna be a little demonstration of this DSC PC2550 system that a friend sent me. Thank you very much for that. And this is a neat panel. It's got a few different features that several others don't, and I don't know of really any others that do. Maybe a few other older DSCs, but this is, it's pretty interesting. It's got two specific features I'm gonna to demonstrate today. I've also got the remote telephone arming and disarming module installed in this system. It's not meant for this, but it's kind of a universal module that was also sent me, sent to me by that friend. So um, we're going to show that. So this isn't going to be like a regular test where you know arm it, set it off, disarm it. That's it. I'm just mainly going to show those two features. So what we're going to do is we're going to first show the exit delay skipping. So effectively. When you arm it, it starts the exit delay like any other normal panel would, but when it detects that you've exited through the entry exit door, it actually skips the rest of the exit delay instead of waiting for it to expire. So I think that's a pretty neat feature because it makes it more secure because once you've exited, then it's already done arming and knows. You don't have to worry about someone going right in just right after you've armed it. So I have my exit delay set at like 30 seconds, but you'll see that it skips it once I open the door. So what we're going to do is we're going to arm it. We're going to open the we're going to open the door here. Close it. And you'll notice it skips the rest of the exit delay. And now it's going to dial out to the central station receiver, so let's show that portion. You're using the D6000 receiver today. Uh, I've actually reconnected the buzzer in this thing, and we're reporting right now. There we go. Realize it showed account number 015, and it was a closing report for zone 1 technically, but really zone is the user number, so this user code 1 was used to arm it. And it printed it, it's in automatic mode, so you didn't really see it, but this panel is using 40 pulse per second, three plus one extended with checksum. That's a lot to process. It's typically called Radionic Super Fast. So uh, it's the best pulse format this panel supports, and I think this panel only does pulse. So, I mean, this works great for it though. So now that it's armed, I'm going to go and uh, disarm it so we can show the other feature. We go over here we can uh disarm it just by entering our code and we're going to send the opening report so let's go watch that happen i'll let you listen to it report We go. So what that sent is you noticed it sent two rounds of data and the receiver only act after a single transmission. That's because it's using the checksum format. So really it was an expanded report that sent 015B, then BBB1, which indicated, you know, account 15B for opening on user one. So that's how that reporting works. Now I'm going to demonstrate the telephone module arming. So we have this Nortel phone here, which I still gotta make a demonstration on this system. But for now, I'm just gonna dial the panel. Hello, for system status, please enter access code. Your alarm system is not armed. To change system status, please enter access code. Now what it did there is it asked me for my access code when I initially dialed it, entered it, and it reads you the system status, and then you can enter it to change the status. So let's arm it. I just messed it up. Let's see. It took it anyway. Your okay. alarm system is armed. To change system status, please enter access code. Then we can go ahead and disarm it. Your alarm system is not armed. To change system status, please enter access code. So that's a neat little way you can arm and disarm this remotely. And to hang up, we hit star twice. Thank you and goodbye. Yeah, so that's a cool little module. Effectively how it works is it connects to the panel in two ways. It connects 
it has a relay output that you connect to the panel's key switch input, and what it does is it just moment momentarily shorts it so that it can toggle the arm status. But it also monitors an output from the panel that indicates the arm status, so that's how it's able to read you whether or not it's armed. And if, let's say, the door was open and it wasn't set for force arming, and I tried to arm it, it would try to arm the panel by pulsing the key switch input, then it would compare it would, if it, the panel doesn't arm, it'll say no change, try again. I can't easily demonstrate that now because it's programmed for force arming, so it wouldn't even happen, but it's just a neat little quirk of this module. So let's go ahead and program it for the second feature I want to demonstrate. I'm not gonna explain programming because it's complicated. There, so that's enabled. This option is effectively the closing verification. So what it does is usually you will arm the panel, the exit delay happens, and whenever you either exit and it skips the rest or the exit delay expires, then it'll call the central station to report the closing signal as we saw before. In this mode, it doesn't actually start the exit delay until it has reported to the central station already. So it dials out first, then arms. Now, I guess this could be used in very high security applications if you wanted to make sure that it definitely got the closing report through. So you'll see how this works. So this time we're going to quick arm it by pressing star zero. You'll notice it picks up the phone line. And we are not in the exit delay period right now. We are currently just dialing. There it is, reporting. And when it's done reporting, after the second acknowledgement, there's the first, You'll hear the keypad beep and the exit delay will start. There we go. Now let's go silence the receiver. Okay. So that's the closing verification feature, which I think that's pretty neat. And one more thing that this can do is quick exit, which a few other panels have, but I just think it's worth mentioning. I guess we should do that so now it knows we exited and it'll skip the exit delay let's just give it a moment there see now the ready lights out so it's armed totally now if you wanted to just exit real quick you can actually just press star zero and it'll let you enter or enter or exit once and that's a cool little feature so then if i have it armed at night and i just want to exit in the morning or something you just press star zero. You don't have to disarm it and then rearm it and wait through the exit delay. You just press star zero. It's that simple. So let's go ahead and disarm the panel. And we'll watch the report be sent and then we'll send a panic alarm. There we go. Count 15, opening zone one. Well, user number one. So now let's activate the panic alarm for fire panic. And what this is gonna do is it's going to report an alarm on zone number one, or not one, zone number nine, which is the code programmed in the, the panel as the panic signal. So let's watch that happen. The fire key is the one on the far left. You can basically just hold it for about a second. And there we go. We're in an alarm state and the memory light comes on. There's no sounder hooked up, obviously, and interestingly, the keypad does not em emit any noise during alarm. Let's see what it reports. Looks like it was uh, alarm zone nine, and then a restoral report. The restore report is because, I mean, the panic immediately restores. There's no, like, zone it has to wait to restore for. But it reported a zone 9 alarm. And that's just the code I use for panic alarms is 9. And codes 1 through 8 is usually zone 1 through 8 alarm, and 0 is a test report. So that's the fire panic coming in. Let's come over here and reset it. So we can enter our code. And it's an arm now, and disarm. 
Oh, wait. We got the closing verification enabled. We got to wait for that to finish. I should have disabled that before I tested this. Okay. Now we're disarmed and the memory's cleared. Now let me go over here and silence this again. I like having the buzzer enabled, but it's also annoying having to get up and silence it every time. And then we're reporting again. This is probably the, uh, yeah, this is the opening report. There we go. So that's been a quick little demonstration on this panel. Uh, one more cool little thing is you can actually initiate a keypad lamp test and send a test report from the keypad. You do star six, enter your code. Now we're in like a user menu and you just press eight and hit pound to exit. So that's just a nice little keypad lamp test. And we're gonna send a restoral zone E, which is the radionics code for a test report. Yep, and there you have it. You saw the account 15 versus Toral on zone E. And effectively for radionics expanded reports, a restoral or trouble for the hexadecimal zones being B, C, D, E, and F is special reports, so as well as nine and zero. So zero trouble is like an AC failure, zero restorals, AC restoral. Nine is for the battery, B is for phone line one, C is for phone line two. D is for data bus. F, I think, what is that one? F is for remote programming, so if it fails, if you try to remote program and it fails, it reports a trouble. If it succeeds, it's a restoral. And then a restoral zone E is test report, and a trouble on zone E is failure to open or close. So that's radionics codes for you. You just gotta memorize them. But yeah, that's the DSC. Uh, 2550 reporting to the D6000 receiver. Now let's go ahead and disable that option again. There. Back to normal. So now, uh, hopefully I'll show some more about this panel in the future. I already decoded kind of how its data bus works between the keypad and the panel. The keypad has no processor in it whatsoever. It's actually completely logic chips. So that's kind of interesting, but it's really simple. So maybe at some point I'll make some form of a special module to interface with this panel. It's a pretty cool little system. So uh, hope you enjoyed.